Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, back into our PBEM challenge against the devilish Mr. Lodrick, and we're still recovering from the disaster at Suva. Uh, I thought this time we'd go look kind of all around the map, kind of a big picture view. Sometimes, uh, you know, I spend time just in one quadrant here or there. Uh, this time I thought we'd just go look around. I'm not going to build task forces, you know, while, during the stream, or <laughs> I say stream, recording, I guess. Um, rather, I thought we'd just kind of go around, look at the bigger picture, and see where everything is floating about on the map. But before we do that, as usual, let's go to the stats and see what's happening. Uh, as you can see, Lodric uh, continues to just batter us with sorties, uh, especially in China, just just devastating forces out there uh, with bo his bombing campaign, which has been very, very successful. 85-85 on the sorties during the last turn. We ran about 5,000. Overall, as you can see, he's got about a 57,000 uh, sortie advantage on us. Air-to-air uh, -air losses, we took one, he took zero. Well, we won a lot more than, of that uh, because he is making bombing runs. Unfortunately, where he's making the bombing runs now, whether it be China or Malaysia, uh, we don't really have a lot of fighters out there. I mean, we've got one squadron of the Flying Tigers that's been ripped up a little bit in China. Uh, chi the Chinese do have some I-15s and I-16s. They're not going to do a whole lot uh, with very inexperienced pilots. Uh, in Malaysia, we've basically gotten everything out of Singapore that mattered uh, from an air perspective anyway. And so, really, I mean, he's flying missions uh, unmolested. So, you know, no air-to-air -air losses this time. Destroyed on the field, zero and zero. Destroyed by flak. Again, flak and operational is where we're going to have to get into his air force a little bit if we can. Uh, he took two this time. He's got 64 for the campaign. We've got 11. Operationally, we both took two. That's just kind of, you know, it's always going to happen, right? Uh, when you're flying this many aircraft uh, out and about. We have 275 political points. I'm letting those build up. I want to buy more out to get off the U.S. West Coast. We'll talk about that when we get over there. Lodric has surged into a lead, 93.55, 91.54 for us. Now that is going to build and build. He is yet to take Singapore, which is 1,800 points all on its own. Um, and some other places you may say, oh my gosh, uh, all hope is lost. No, no, not, not really. Uh, Lodric would have to get a four to one lead over us uh, in 1943 for a sudden victory. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, well, we'll see, right? I mean, bold prediction, but I think uh, we'll be all right. You know, it goes from four to one in 43 to three to one in 44 to two to one in 1945 for a sudden victory. And then after that, it just goes to the scorecards. So, you know, uh, the way this game is going, I I don't know. I mean, we're going to try to eventually invade his home islands, but it may go two points. So we've got to try to restrict his point gain to what we can. Uh, we've done a lot better job of that lately. We did. I did make the mistake up to Suva. Uh, but other than that, we've really tightened things up over the last, I don't know, five to ten turns. And things are looking much, much better from that perspective. Along those lines, let's go and look at Ship Sunk last turn and as you can see this is the aftermath of the disaster at Suva uh, this was off Canduvo Island uh, so all of these uh, you know we had the President Buchanan the Idaho the Dixie they were all part of that Suva group as was well the Manipa was actually not part of that group it was coming out of Suva all part of the same ball of wax where we got really hurt uh tamara the tamara akl you know we're gonna lose some one points pointers i think this was actually up by the suva area as well other than that we didn't really lose anything around the map which is how we've got to keep it uh from now on it's got to be tight tight as a tick uh as my grandmother used to say okay um Let's look at the group reinforcement schedule for air just to kind of see what we have coming in in the near future. We need as many damn fighters into India as we can get. And as you can see, Hurricane 2B Trops coming into Aden in one day. We got to get those on an AK that we put as an aircraft uh, carrier or <laughs> aircraft carrier, I wish, uh, that we convert to aircraft uh, transport. Uh, we got to get that to India as soon as possible and either get it to Colombo, Madras, or Calcutta. 
you know, we've got to get as many planes in there as we can. So we, we stop this uh, raid like he did last time uh, into Colombo, which hurt us, of course. Uh, that was the disaster at Port Blair. We've had two disasters in this war so far. Um, and so we need to get as many fighters as we can into those areas. You can see we also get 25 Warhawks into Perth. Uh, that's awesome. It's great when you just get the fighters directly into Australia. We get some other Warhawks into the eastern U.S. We'll get them on the rails to Los Angeles and hopefully out on a transport. Uh, we've got some Hurricane. These, now, these are reconned aircraft. There's only two of them. They'll, those go into Rangoon. Uh, that's high battle pay when you go straight into Rangoon right now uh some more b-17 fortresses those are showing up at camp pendleton okay i mean those really training aircraft for the most part i believe let's see uh yeah they're fourth u.s bomber command so the fourth always on the west coast uh generally restricted some of them you can buy out but for the most part they're training aircraft the fourth is uh we get a lot of era cobras in 75 era cobras in you know approximately three turns eastern u.s again throw those on the rail you know you do a transfer base los angeles that puts them on the railroad and off they go usually they can get there in like two or three days which are like man they were they must really what is that high speed rail out there uh but <laughs> but they do get into los angeles in a turn or two and then again on transports air cobras are great to have at some of your smaller places pago pago potentially uh wellington places like that <clears throat> excuse me usually i put the warhawks into australia directly the era cobras i put out in the pacific that's just how i do it I, I don't know that there's necessarily a science behind that the era cobras fly at a lower altitude uh ideally than the warhawks do just something to keep in mind uh but we get a lot of era cobras soon 75 of those um as far as ship availability, what do we have coming in? Let's do the ETA. We got that backwards. Now let's do the ETA. To the top we go. Uh, we've got two brand new battleships coming into San Francisco in two days. So that's great. We really didn't lose a whole lot at Pearl Harbor battleship wise. Now, some of those are being repaired, of course. I mean, we've got some that are damaged, but we didn't lose as many battleships as you might sometimes lose into or after the attack on Pearl Harbor. A lot of those are being repaired, but getting two brand new ones is nice. Uh, we'll take it. It doesn't have a named class. I think maybe these are the New Mexico class, though. When they come on, yeah, you can see here, New Mexico class. So they do have a named class. It's the New Mexico. Um... Let's just look at the loadout on that. You got 14 inch guns. Uh, those are the big boys for the bombardment or ship to ship. Okay, 554 on the anti-aircraft. So these are not the best battleships in the world, but they're battleships nonetheless. Uh, they certainly don't hurt, we'll take them. Uh, you'll also see down here at Balboa and also at Los Angeles, we get new submarines. We get the Grampus and the Greyback at Balboa, and we get the Grenadier at Los Angeles. Let's look at the Grampus. This is the GAR class, okay. Um, it has got the Mark 14 torpedoes, so it's gonna be absolute shite, but uh, that's okay. I mean, you know, uh, let's get them out there. We'll shoot at something, and maybe it'll just bounce off of it. Uh, if we're lucky, it'll hit it, and then it'll bounce off of it. Uh, if we're not so much, maybe we'll just scare him. Uh, we've also got the Sumatra coming into Surabaya, of all places. Uh, we'll just have to get that out of there immediately. I mean, there's no reason to be there. We get yet another, another battleship in 11 days, the Idaho in at San Francisco. This is also that same New Mexico class, 14-inch guns. This one's got 822 on the anti-aircraft, so maybe there's a little bit of difference. Uh, now I'm curious. Oh, this is what happened. Okay, that's... 822 on the Mississippi. So really the New Mexico, the namesake of the class is the worst uh, for the actual anti-aircraft. The other ones are quite good. Um, so great, the Idaho. We get a carrier, the Hornet. Uh, you can also see the British get a battleship, the Revenge in 17 days. This is the Royal Sovereign class. These have 15 inch guns and there is 782 on the anti-aircraft. Okay, cool. Where is that dang? 
Oh, look at this. Man, the Brits are really going to get some nice battleships in here. Again, the Royal Sovereign class, same idea. Um, the Ramillies and the Revolution. We'll take that. Uh, the Nashville. I know, <laughs> I know there's a carrier coming. Three more submarines you see there. Where are you, Hornet? Where are you, Hornet? Well, now I'm going to... Oh, wow. Look at all these at San Diego. Now, these are short-range subs. I didn't mean... I, I'm not meaning to spend this much time looking at the new ship. There's the Hornet in 50 days. There it is. 50 days, uh, it can take out 90 aircraft, all right? Looks like the initial load on it is 37, 53, 61. So we'll be able to put another squadron on there. Maybe one of the ones at San Diego. We've also got another training group that's out of Pearl Harbor that's at least carrier capable. They're not carrier trained, but they are carrier capable. Uh, we've got the Hell Divers coming in. Now that's a new aircraft, and we'll take a look at it when it comes on the map. All right. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to look at one other thing. Ground reinforcement schedule. Uh, we have a lot of Pacific Fleet, Southwest Pacific, and South Pacific coming on the map for the United States over the next, you know, four turns or so. I mean, just a, a massive amount of stuff. This all will need to go on the rail to Los Angeles. There may be a few things where I've got transports up on the east coast of the U.S. as well. There may be a few things that we send through to Cape Town and then either on to Australia, down to Perth, the western side of Australia, or up to India. We'll have to see. Uh, you know, usually I have the Americans stay in Australia. I have the Australians go into India, which is what I'm doing in this game. The new 17th, 18th, and 19th regiments for the Australians I'm putting directly into India instead of floating them all the way down to Australia I think that's the Australian sixth division uh, I put it together at Madras or Calcutta usually uh, just because it's so close you get it on there almost immediately but as you can see we also you know start to get a few new Chinese things in at Chongqing believe me we need all the help we can get in China that's probably the place where I'm most concerned at this moment. Uh, he is just, and you can see though, we keep getting new Chinese cores. If there's one thing that the uh, Chinese have, it's a lot of people. And then you can see new Australian cores down here too, 21st and 25th. But we'll look at all of that. So, you know, I mean, we've got a lot of manpower coming on the map soon. Um, we've got some smaller, you know, field regiments. These are artillery uh, okay, anyway, you know, I could sit here and look at this stuff all day. I love it. <laughs> but let's actually go look at the map. All right, and I always start every turn up in the eastern U.S. Uh, off-map base, okay? And if we go look at that, as you can see, we've had a lot of planes that have just come in here, actually. We've got, uh, and these are 5th Bomber, so we do not have to buy these out. If we click on 5th Bomber and you look here, they're assigned to Southwest Pacific, so they can go immediately out into the Pacific with no charge. What do I do with these? You know, we do transfer base, Los Angeles, and I always have everything staged out of Los Angeles, so I would just hit that, and off it goes on the rail. It disappears here. It's just gone. Oh, you know what, though? We <laughs> Well, I already did this for the real turn, but you want to make sure these are, when you go to a new air unit, they start off at train 40. Make sure it's 100. Make sure the range is zero. Think about the altitude. Now, these are dive bombers. They're, I'm going to set them for naval attack. So I usually train those at 6,000. All right, we'll do training, naval attack. All right, and then we'll transfer base. And that's what you need to do with every single one of these. Off to Los Angeles it goes. Then we have some A-20 Havocs. If we look at the pilots, it will tell you, generally speaking, what you would like to do with them ideally. And here you can see ground bombing. This is where they would be the best. Now this is a HQS and is Stanley very rightly, is it? Oh, I thought it was. No, it's, it's not showing that this is the quote unquote headquarters. Let's see what it says if we um, disband it. It would go to the pools. I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm actually just gonna pop that up to 100. Uh, we do ground bombing at 8,000 feet. Maximum range zero, training, ground attack, 
off to Los Angeles you go. We may merge that in with something else when it gets out there. Uh, let's see. We've got another fifth bomber. So these are different kinds of aircraft, but they're all in fifth U.S. bomber. These are Mitchells, okay? I can tell you uh, the Mitchells are pretty damn good at everything. Now, these Mitchells, the pilots they gave us, are really ground bombing specialists, it just depends. I mean, a lot of times I like uh, the Mitchells to do some, uh, also be able to go out and do some naval bombing because they have a really nice radius. And if you can get these pilots trained up in the Mitchell, uh, it can be really, really deadly. So let's just do that. Training, naval attack, 100. Uh, let's take that down to 6,000 no range, and off to Los Angeles. All right, I'm not going to sit here and do all of these. I just wanted you to get a basic idea of what's here. We've got Aracobras. They're in the 13th. If we look at the 13th, it's also South Pacific. All right, so the 5th Bomber Group, right, was Southwest Pacific. Uh, the 13th USAAF is South Pacific. Usually I put these in South Pacific. I put them in New Zealand, but we'll see when they get out there. Again, you would just do training 100, training escort. Uh, we'll look at the aircraft data. Eh, they kind of drop off after 10,000. I guess you could put them at 15, uh, either 10 or 15. Their maneuverability really goes down below that. We'll just do that, and then we go off to Los Angeles, and then we have more dive bombers. These are Banshees. What do we have uh, here for the pilots here? These are, the Banshees really, you know, ground bombing is probably the way you want to go with those. Most dive bombers, I do naval attack early on, uh, but something like the Banshees there with these kind of pilots, probably ground bombing. I can't remember what I did when I actually sent the turn back to Lodric on this one. We've got two ships here. Uh, we've got the Vermont. And we got the Admiral Chase. They're identical. Let's put them together. So we put the Admiral Chase in there. All right, now we've got one. What is the key here? Well, it's the endurance. Anything over 14,500 in endurance can go to Cape Town and back without refueling. All right. And so uh, what do I usually do with the Eastern Coast? I either send, send them to Cristobal or to Cape Town. One of the two. If they're ships that are over 14,700, I send them to Cape Town. If they're below 14,500 or whatever, I send them down to Cristobal. All right. So if we go look at Cristobal, how are we doing down here? Uh, we're doing really well. I've gotten a lot of supply and a lot of fuel into Cristobal. And then I'll take other short range ships out of Cristobal and I'll send them to my initial staging bases, which are Haiva Oa and Tahiti. And these are very, very easy little, I think out of the penalty box to Haiva Oa from Cristobal, it just goes straight across right here and straight back. It's as safe as it can get. You can see, you can barely see the box down here. Uh, you know, is it possible the Japanese sub gets down here? Well, of course. I mean, they can go anywhere on the map for the most part, for a little while anyway, but this is about as safe as it gets. So I stage out of Haiva Oa, which I'm building up that base, the port as fast as we can, and to Tahiti. And I build Tahiti up like crazy. Once it's into Tahiti and Haiva Oa, then you can decide what you want to do with it. It can go to Pago, it could go to Suva, it can go over to. Auckland or Wellington, one of these two. I use both. Uh, you can see all of the ships that I have coming in down here because Lodric has been so aggressive that I'm bringing everything south of Australia. Most of this is going to curl up and either come into Wellington. I, in this game, am also using Dunedin. Uh, I find as an allied player that Dunedin is very, very underrated. You could build this into a level seven port and I will try. You could build this into the top tier airfield, all right? So build these up, and a lot of Axis players will come down here. They know that you're going to be at Wellington. Usually, they really actually just look at Auckland. They may take a snoop around Wellington, but they completely forget about Dunedin. And if you look, you know, you come into Dunedin, then you just come out and around Tasmania up to Melbourne, and it's about as safe as it gets, you know, in this game, you know, it's all relatively speaking, right? But come into Dunedin. And so that's really, you know, my logistical network, Haiva Oa Tahiti. From there, we either go to New Zealand 
or we go up to the islands, okay? But I try to bring everything, whether it be from the U.S. West Coast or otherwise, into these bases. All right, well, that's not a consideration here for these two ships because these two ships have a big range, 14,700, so they're perfect for Cape Town. Let's go look at Cape Town because I know I'm a little low on fuel at Cape Town. As a matter of fact, more than a little low, we've got almost no fuel at Cape Town, which is not the situation you want to be in, certainly. And so more and more of these task forces that have at least a decent cargo hold need to go to transporting fuel. Now, usually anything under 5,000, I will not load with fuel if it's dry cargo. It's if it's a dry cargo ship. Why is that? Well, it's almost not worth it, right? Once you split this in half and it becomes 4950 or whatever it is, uh, I guess 48 40 4900. Um well, I guess yeah, that makes sense. 4900. Um you know, once you're taking fuel, you cut this in half, right? Because it's dry cargo ship. 4,900, it's not even worth going to Cape Town and back, right? And so we've already got this docked. We're going to load supply. And what do I do with this? You know, I send that over to Cape Town. Okay. Do that first. You got to go into Cape Town. Now you do, do not refuel. Now, if you do make this into a CS, just always remember, you got to go back do not refuel. And remember how I was saying, okay, uh, 14,500 is kind of the cutoff to go there and back. Well, you can see that here. It's 367 hex round trip. It's 170 hexes to Cape Town one way, right? And so, you know, 367 is their maximum before they need fuel. We need 340 to go to Cape Town and back. So you can put this on do not refuel. We'll probably just have this be a continuous supply. It's going to run supply back and forth to Cape Town until the end of the game. All right, so it's Eastern U.S. You can see we've got things coming through the rails. Uh, coming through, wow, that sounds <laughs> that sounds weird. Yes, going down the rail, going down the rail, to La always to Los Angeles. That's where I stage everything. Uh, this is the Bobcats, U.S. Navy Naval Construction Battalion. Excellent. So we've got some engineers there. They're coming down the rail. What else do I have coming down the rail and strap move? This is a base force that's a Pacific Fleet. And so this is the uh, U.S. Marine Corps Air Wing Base Force. Awesome. Look at that aviation support. This is the kind of unit you either want in Auckland, Suva, or probably Brisbane, Sydney. I mean, it's kind of those four places to have this kind of aviation support. Uh, but since it's Marines, probably really, ideally, you would want this up in Suva. We'll see. We'll see if we can get it out there safely. Uh, you know, we don't want another disaster of Suva. All right. So those are coming through the pipes down to, again, always to Los Angeles. And that's where I have all my transports is in Los Angeles. What do I have out in Ogden? Well, I've got all my B-17s and they're all training. Now, these are all part of 5th U.S. Bomber. We already saw that that's Southwest Pacific. So, I mean, we could take them out to the Pacific anytime we want, but we don't really have anything to bomb long range and even if we did these guys aren't very good yet so we've just got them training like hell now i think that well let's see i've got this guy on airfield attack uh we talked about this last time didn't we seventh bomber group i think i put everything on airfield attack and then when we get like fifth and sixth bomber group and they're all together we'll do one that's like port attack and then we'll do one that's ground attack and that way you have b-17 pilots that are good you know good at each different type of mission but you know you can keep it consistent through the whole bombing group at least that's how i keep it straight in my mind you can do it however the heck you want it's just an idea in san diego we have u.s uh fleet air west this is the navy pilots that are out here training you can see u.s navy fleet air west you know, these are just training aircraft. Now, um, I do have these running some missions. You know, I've got them doing, I've got them actually doing the mission. Well, that'll train them too, right? When they're actually doing stuff. And so around San Diego, I just wanted to have, you know, some search up, 
it's not a big deal. You know, some of these pilots, as they get on in time a little bit, will release them into the reserves if they get good enough and will bring new ones in. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we talk about training. I'm not going to do that in this episode. We've got some uh, YPs here that are just yard patrol. That's what I call them anyway. Uh, the transports, uh, 2nd Marine Regiment is loading on here. We've got it fully loaded, and now it's just a matter of where do we want to take it. But it's more of than a matter than that. We need some escort here with it. 2nd Marine Regiment, when I do get a destroyer over here or a destroyer, destroyer minesweeper or destroyer mine layer, where am I going to take it? Well, I'm going to take it, and this is what I do with every single one of these, I take it uh, just outside Hiva Oa. I put it right there, okay, and I'll put it on Remain on Station so it just sits there. Uh, then every time I go down there and check, what's at Hiva Oa? Then we look at the map and say, okay, where do I want to send it? Where is this supposed to go? Now you may say, well, I should do that earlier because we want to set its objective. And that is true. I mean, you know, if you know exactly where you want to send it, set its objective even while it's sitting on the transport, you can do it. Set its objective wherever you want it to go. This is such a dynamic kind of uh, moving map right now that I'm not exactly sure where I want it to go. So I'll send it down to Hiva Oa. This is as safe as it gets. It gets into the penalty box out here. And then uh, come right around here, sit at Hiva Oa. Once it's here, we could send it up to Christmas Island if we wanted to. Uh, we could send it all the way out to Canton, probably not, Pago, Suva, or we could just keep it going, and you can see my lane down here on the bottom of the map. So once they get to Hiva Oa, you know, I'll have them go just south of Tahiti here, down through the Austral Islands. If they need more fuel, they can stop in Hiva Oa, or they can stop in Tahiti uh, as a quick, I usually do tactical refuel. Uh, minimal refuel gives you 10% over what the game thinks you need to get somewhere and back. Tactical gives you 50%. I like to do 50% just because if you do run into the Japanese and you have to course correct, you don't want to run out of fuel because of that. So I usually do tactical refuel. Other people may have other ideas. Uh, as far as what we've got here, well, we've got USN Fleet Air West Her Headquarters. All right, so they're getting some command. We've got coastal, we've got AA, we've got a base force. Uh, you know, usually at a major place like San Diego, you'd have more infantry here. But really, I mean, is this where Laudrick is going to go? Is he going to just come land in San Diego? I find that doubtful. So I've got most of my troops over in Los Angeles. Um, and let's go look at LA. What do we have here? Well, for the most part, we all we have fourth. You know, fourth USAF, fourth, fourth, fourth. You see that? And we have some of the U.S. Fleet Air West. The only thing that really is not restricted is this U.S. Navy Forward Air Central Pacific. This headquarters is located out in Hawaii. I do believe, let's go, is it on the map yet? Oh, it's not on the map, but you can see it, it is kind of hooked in here with the Hawaiian groups, and that's where it will show up when that command gets on the map. So these are Catalinas. Really, you know, we've got enough recon around here, whether it be ships or planes, that I want to get, that we need all the Catalinas out into the Pacific as we can get them. They're the very best naval search recon aircraft that you have at the start of the game, they can go up to 20 hexes. And so we really need those out there, right? And how do we go about that? Well, we could, oh, and you can see we've got carriers here, my friends. Um, how do we go about that? Well, you can take one of the AKs, especially one of the faster AKs. So take, well, this is an AP. We don't want that. How about this AK? The Aspasia Nomakos, okay? Fine, the Aspasia Nomakos. Let's form a new one and let's do air transport. Okay. Now, when you have dedicated air transport ships, the planes are not deconstructed before they're put on the ship. For something like this, they are. So it's going to take a couple of turns to build to dress them down and then to build them back up when you get where you're going. But that's okay. Uh, and then all what do we do? We dock. We load troops. We'll look at the one air group. This is it. Ten Catalinas. Just select it. 
you verify the load, you accept the load, and on they're going to go, VP72. All right. What else do we have here at LA? So um, that's the one we just built. We've got our carriers. I'm training some other aircraft on the carriers, the ones that were sitting here at Los Angeles. Uh, as you can see, we have these are the three other training groups we have for carrier. They're all carrier capable, right? And you can always tell them VMF, VMSB, that those are carrier, generally carrier, or they can be on a ship. Now, they may be recon planes that can just be on a cruiser or a light cruiser, uh, but usually if they have that V in the start there, it means they're at least carrier capable. But we want to get them carrier trained. That's why I brought the carriers back in here. Uh, as you can see, we got a nice little you know carrier force here. It's just sitting at Los Angeles for now. That's fine. We've got transports. The first Marine uh, Raider is being loaded on here. Looks like it's fully loaded now. All right. What's this group? The Raider Battalion. Um, yeah, it's got a 40 assault strength. It's not super strong. It's got light machine guns. It's got a Raider squad, whatever the hell that is. I, I like it, though. It sounds sounds imposing. Um, and it's got a little support, so we'll put that out on an island. And as you can see, we're putting it on a transport. But we do need destroyers uh, to escort it out. Uh, what do I have on these transports? Nothing. Nothing. As a matter of fact, nothing's on here for now. But let's go see what we have that's ready to go out. Now, I've got a lot of these moved already to Strat, even though they're West Coast restricted. Uh, because I'm going to buy them out. Now, this one we couldn't buy out if we wanted to. It's grayed out. But anything lit up, you could potentially buy out. Uh, but let's try if we can't. Well, we don't have anything out here that's Pacific, Southwest Pacific, or South Pacific, or Southeastern Asia for that matter. So there's nothing else to load on these guys. So why don't we, on these guys, these transports, let's disband them then. Go back to this transport. That gives us one of our destroyers we've been looking for. Let's put the Bagley in there. And now he's got an escort to take First Marine Raider out. Again, what would I do with this? Well, we would go straight to the hex right behind a Hiva Oa. That brings it on a very safe route down here. Now it does, again, have some escort. Uh, usually I like to have two, but this is just one transport. So let's get it out there as fast as we can. What else do I have here? I have a bunch of tankers that are all full. And this is what I'll do is I'll fill them up and I'll wait for the escort to get back. We have uh, other ships out here such as this tanker group that's just unloaded at Pearl Harbor. It's on its way back. Um, it's empty, as you can see. When these guys get back, we'll disband this quickly. We'll take the destroyer, the two destroyers and the destroyer mine layer. We'll throw it in that other tanker group and send it out. All right, and then these guys will fill up these tankers while this one's out here coming back. It'll be totally full and f full, uh, full, full. And then we'll take this, these escorts, and we'll put them back into this group and just back and forth, back and forth. I do that with tankers and uh, cargo, supply cargo. I'll just rotate. I'll do one tanker group. And I'll have another tanker group filling up. I'll do one big cargo group and I'll have another cargo group filling up. Uh, we've got more air transport. You can see these are fighters uh, that are heading out here. We've got air cobras, just three. Oh, that was the one Stanley pointed out. This is one, it's still a little rusty. I hadn't played in a few months. This HQS, you think of them as head, well, I say you think of them, they're called a headquarter squadron. But they don't really practically do anything. And so when we get to their destination, now I should have done that back here, San Francisco, where Seattle, where they came out of Seattle, I think. Um, you should just disband them and absorb them into one of these squadrons. That way you're taking up one less air transport. Uh, but we didn't do that. That's okay. We'll do it when it gets there. Now, you can see this one I've actually got going to Tahiti. Uh, so that's the other place I'll go, either Haiva O or Tahiti. It's going to come in there, refuel. We're going to assess the situation and figure out where we want that to go. Um, we've got a transport here. 
This has got more fighters on it. This one's also going to Tahiti. Was that the same one? No, it's a different one. That's how many planes we got coming out. These are new, a new sub that I've got, Silver Sides, that came into, I think, San Francisco. It's coming out to Pearl Harbor. This is part of the Gato class. Ariari Gato, Mr. Roboto. Uh, this is Mark 14's. Okay, so it's going to be crap again, but that's, you know, hey, look, let's build up these submarines. Eventually, they'll get the Mark 15s, and we'll be in a little bit of business. You can see I've got destroyers. We know that he's got a lot of subs out here. We just don't know necessarily exactly where they're, they're posted up. So I have got destroyer after destroyer after destroyer out here doing antis. ASW, I think you can only have four. Yep, that's right. Well, it's, it's still got the same ASW. Uh, I made a mistake there. This should not be on surface combat. It should be ASW, anti-sub. And you may say, well, where the heck is it then? You can only have four ships in an anti-sub group. And here I've got five. And so what we would need to do is transfer two of the, let's just say two of these out. And now you see ASW combat because it knows we, we can make one less than four. Let's just take the Henley and the Jarvis. Okay. Now it's on ASW, right? And then if we go back to the other one, now we can turn that to ASW because it's got four or less craft. And we'll just do patrol zones out here with that. Uh, that's Silver Sides. Here is one of our big cargo task forces. You can see it's unloaded at Pearl Harbor. DD, DD, DMS. This one's going back to San Diego for some reason. I actually like them to go to Los Angeles, and I'll probably just change that over to Los Angeles. And I have everything come out of LA or San Francisco. I don't see any reason not to. Uh, and we'll, you know, change its home port to uh, LA as well. All right. And what else do we have out here? Uh, this is a tanker group. So we have tanker groups coming in out, out of Vancouver. So I've got one group coming in out of Los Angeles. I've got one group coming out of Vancouver. Take the big boys, put them with three KVs, and Vancouver alone could supply Pearl Harbor with all the fuel you'll ever need. 42,000 and Vancouver I think ends up with you know like over 2 million tons of fuel as you keep going in the game. Uh, we've got another one out here. This is also dry cargo a supply coming out here a big AK group three destroyers big AK group coming into Pearl Harbor. This one's coming out of San Francisco. So I've also got them coming out of San Francisco. Like I said, I used to, I, I usually like to have one or two at a time coming out, uh, but just one from a port. So you can be filling back up at that port. Are we doing that in San Francisco? Do I have another one? No, I don't have another one back here, but uh, you get the idea. You know, at L.A., fill it up while one's going out there and coming back and then immediately send it with the same escort uh, back out to Pearl Harbor. Uh, also at LA, let's look at this. Uh, yeah, oh, that's right. We already looked at that. Not much to do there. I've got a lot of training going on at March Field. These will all be fourth U.S. fighter usually for me. Uh, and so these are all just training. You can see we can't buy any of those out out of fourth. Uh, I'm also building up Mojave because eventually we'll have enough planes that'll spill over there. But I keep all a fourth right here. And any plane that's already Pacific ready, I also keep, I bring it into Los Angeles and take it out on the transports here. Uh, we've just got, you know, uh, recon looking out here. San Francisco, we've got some Catalinas going, but this is mainly all going to be fourth bomber. Now you can see we could buy some of these out if we want. And we've got 13th USAAF. Like I said, I like to take these though. Well, let's see if we have a transport here or what we have here actually. Uh, we've got a couple we've got a couple of a little faster AKs like the Oak Bank. You know, we could take that Oak Bank. Let's do air transport. You know, it could be either one of these 13s. The Oak Bank, done. All right, we'll dock it. We'll load troops. And as you'll see, the only one we could load is the one in 13th because that's the only one ready for the Pacific. Just load that up, verify the load, accept the load. 
and we'll send that off into the Pacific as soon as we have some escort. Moving up the coast, so I really, you know, everything for me is LA and San Francisco. I will build up Marchfield and Mojave just in case we have a spillover. I also will build up Sacramento uh, because you could take this to a level 10 airfield. I take all my B-17s. I have them back at Ogden. That's where I train. Uh, we've got, you know, motorized units out here. And then you have Seattle. Seattle, I just have cargo coming in here and I dump it all into Anchorage. All right. Seattle to Anchorage, Seattle to Kodiak, Seattle to Cold Bay or Dutch Harbor, just over and over and over again. That's what we do. Um, you know, Oak Harbor doesn't really matter. What is, why is this here? Oh, it's unloading. I guess Oak Harbor had a little supply shortage out here for whatever reason, but take you know, fairly decent size. You get a lot of ships in Anchorage to start with. As a matter of fact, I have some, nope, I've sent those out already. They're down here by Dutch Harbor. But, uh, you know, just take them Seattle to Anchorage, Seattle to Anchorage. You get the idea. Vancouver, everything is going to Pearl Harbor out of Vancouver. So this always happens. I want to talk about the big grand overview and then I get lost down into these. I like to talk about every single thing that's going on here because I think it can be helpful. Uh, Canadians up in Vancouver, uh, they're, you know, training pilots. Uh, you can see for the most part all training. We do have some search. I do have some escort up and around Vancouver just in case, you know, what Logic's going to long range bomb us into Vancouver. Probably not likely, but uh, we've got a little cap up. As you go up these islands, they should all be supplied out of Seattle, potentially Vancouver, but usually out of Seattle. Um, then you have the bigger task forces that come up to Anchorage. They'll drop at Anchorage. Then at Anchorage, you usually have a few small ships. Now, I don't have any there right now because they are already out. I like to build up Kodiak. Uh, why is that? Well, if the Japanese were coming up here, uh, they would get to Kodiak first. Uh, so I usually build up Kodiak. I put some engineers in there. What do we have in there now? Uh, we've got AA, we've got engineers, we've got an infantry group, we've got a base force. That all makes sense. And then I've got uh, some fighters here, but I've broken this fighter. This is all part of the same squadron. Uh, all part of 11th USAAF, which is based up in Alaska generally. Now, they don't have to be. You could take them out to the Pacific. But I like to have one group up here, and that's 11th. Um, because they already have some planes that start up here. I split this group of Warhawks. So they get 25 Warhawks. I split them up into, you know, I did the divide uh, unit. So it's eight, eight, and seven, something like that. Uh, eight, eight, and nine. Maybe that's how it goes. Uh, I've got two of them still here. Now I'll put one in Kodiak. I'll probably put one in Seward once we build up some sort of airfield there. I've also got some fighters in Anchorage already, but then I put the other group down here. Now Dutch Harbor does not start with an airfield. You can build that up if you want, or you can just build up the one that they've got in Cold Bay because it's already a level one. So you start off one level higher uh, and you can start building that up. But, you know, Dutch Harbor, I've got uh, what anti-aircraft I've got some coastal guns uh, base force here in Cold Bay I don't really have much here yet we dropped off the gnome base force go up and grab this stuff at gnome there's no reason to have it up here uh, so we brought the base force down now we're going to go back up there's some infantry up here we'll bring it back down here either to cold bay or dutch harbor there's also other uh, infantry that you could move down here now i do have a base force at adak uh, you can build that one up as well if we move down into pearl harbor again i'm going to kind of gloss over kind of the specifics this time we kind of looked at the west coast this time next time we'll look into hawaii for the specifics and down through the islands uh, but just i want to do the grand overview got to get moving and if we're going to do that, you can see we got the one carrier out here, the Enterprise, with a lot of the uh, cruisers and light cruisers. I think we looked at uh, the repair last time. As a matter of fact, I know we did. And as you can see, you know, we've got more stuff coming out. We'll have the Porpoise coming out, some tenders. We've got a new cruiser, the San Francisco. I say new. It's not so new. It's getting repaired. Uh, that'll be coming out in three days another cruiser, another light cruiser, destroyer, uh, the battleships will continue to move them in there as we get more and more capacity. Uh, what do we have just in here naturally? 
that's not getting repaired. A lot of tenders. We have a light cruiser there, the Phoenix. Is that one of the really good ones? Nah, not really. Uh, but I could just put that in with the carrier. I like to just have them all together so I know where the hell they are. Um, all right. And now it's in there. You know, obviously, this is not how we would sail it out of Pearl Harbor. But you may as well have them all together. Just sitting here, uh, we've got a tanker group. This is the smaller tankers. Uh, smaller endurance, smaller capacity. This will get going down to the islands uh, that we choose once we have some escort. But I've got most of the escort out here looking for Japanese subs. Uh, Johnston, we talked about this kind of stuff last time, right? The Marine um, Defense Battalions. Try to have one of those on each of the islands you care about including a place like Christmas Island where we've got one, a base force, engineers, more engineers, Powell Myra, we've got, again, the Marine Defense Battalion, engineers. What do we have out here? This is a transport group that's dropped. Uh, interesting. So the 101st, now this group was near Suva, and I turned them around. So we're going to have to go find the 101st and drop off what's left of that. Now part of that unloaded, I think it unloaded actually at Pago. I think that that's where we were. Let's go up to Pago and see if the 100, yep, the 101st base force is here. Now how here is it? Uh, we could just turn on replacements and try to get stuff in here. I would actually probably just like to turn around. Now, now that I think he's cleared the area, or is at least trying to clear the area to the west, we may bring that down around behind into Pago and get the rest of the 101st in here. Uh, we've got transports heading back to the west coast. Uh, we talked quite a bit about Tahiti this time. You can see I've got that up to 25,000 supply. We're building on the port, building on the airfield, building fortification. Same with Haiva Oa, uh, building up the port and the airfield. The airfield starts at zero, but you know we're building on both of those. Got some ships coming around here. This is aircraft transport. This is the 22nd bomber group. I did the same thing here, Stanley. Uh, you were right to point that out. I put these uh, HQSs in here. They can be absorbed into the other parts of the bomber group, into one of these squadrons. So we'll do that when we drop it off. You can see it's going to Dunedin. And, uh, you know, so I'll just point that out again. If you're having problems or the Japanese are being very aggressive, I mean, there's, there's his carriers right there. In one turn, he could be right here and all over Auckland. But what would he find? Not a whole lot, like an AMC, uh, minesweeper, local minesweepers and stuff. So I just go down here, down to Dunedin, and hopefully he just doesn't even really look around here because a lot of Japanese players, it never really occurs to them, this might be where you go. If you're still having problems, I mean, really, you just got to ride the bottom of the map. Uh, the problem is, is that's a little too far all the way into Melbourne, so you have to tactically re refuel probably at Haiva Oa, probably at a place like Dunedin, unless you just have massive endurances. Um, we've got some supply ships coming back in here because they're scared to death. We've got submarines that are chasing. We're trying to get to this. You just never know. Even with the Mark 14 torpedo, they may get one off at a carrier. If you could take down a carrier this early in the game just by a blind shot, you may as well go for it. It's worth it. So I've got, you know, this is uh, three submarines. I, I do them in wolf packs. This is four submarines. This is two. So all together, we've got nine submarines here, and they're in hot pursuit uh, trying to get to these carriers. We just haven't built up Suva enough. Now, I've got all this artillery out here because we had to just dump it and get the hell out with the transport. I've got engineers. Now, these are the Americans in all of They've got two base forces, three artillery, and some engineers. The Kiwis have a couple of infantry on here, but they're not great. 49 and 49, so they add up to about 100. If we look at the total assault strength here is 127. I'd rather have that between 300 and 400 and a lot of supply here. Instead, we've got 6,600 supply. Now, we've got plenty of fuel out here for whatever reason. We did get some tankers out here early on, but uh, one thing if I could start back over that I would change is the very first action you should take over here in Australia is load up all the cargo ships you can, have them go to Nomaya, Suva, and Pago. So if you can't, and, and potentially Auckland, it, so if you can't get 
back out to those later, you're not forced to. Uh, part of the problem now is I'm being forced to try to get into Suva, even though he's got carriers about, because, well, they've got 6,600 fuel. The one thing you can't have is for him to park here and essentially starve you off the island. Uh, and so you need to have about 20 or 25,000 tons of supply in here before the Japanese can even get here. And I, I didn't do that. I didn't react fast enough this time. Again, a little bit of rust. I uh, hadn't played one in a while. And it just, I just didn't get out here soon enough. And then when we tried, we just so happened to meet up right when he was getting down here, right? Because his main task force is going to go back to the main Japanese islands, the home islands. They're going to refuel. And then immediately, he usually breaks, yeah, I say he, the Japanese. I've only played Lodric this time. But a Japanese player, if he's smart, will usually break one over here into the South China Sea and then take his other carriers and come straight down here because he knows what you're going to try to do. And this time, I just, you know, against the AI, we would have been out here in plenty of time. But against a good human player, not so much. You have got to get that stuff out immediately it's got to be your first priority so anyway i can't zoom out unfortunately but you get the idea we've got uh this transport got hit it's trying to get back into tahiti we've just got all kinds of stuff out here transports going back to la transports coming into donadon you can see this has got the 161st Infantry, 205th Coastal Artillery. It's got some fighters. It's got a base for her. I mean, this is a real hodgepodge of stuff all coming into Dunedin. I'm going to have a, you know, get a little tactical refuel there. It may go up to Australia. It may stay here. I haven't decided. Uh, we've got stuff coming around here. This should be stuff either going back to Melbourne or coming from Melbourne into Wellington into Dunedin. I usually just put it into one of these two. There's no reason to go all the way up to Auckland. If it goes into Wellington, it'll flow out to Auckland down the rail line. As we get up into Australia, again, I'll talk more in depth about this stuff. Let's just look at Pago really quickly. Uh, we've got uh, one of the Marine Defense Battalions. We've got two American infantry, including the 8th Marine Regiment that we got dropped off here, which is awesome. So I, that is pretty good. 211 uh we want to get some planes out here i mean it's just very dangerous right he's got a, this carrier if he turns this around this turn could be sitting right there by the time we look at this next turn i'm not used to taking playing two day turns and it's really kind of messed with my timing mechanism of of you know what is safe going into places uh you know partially the suva thing i thought okay well if he does have something coming down we'll see it right with the big recon here well doing two day turns he was here before you know we ever had a chance to turn around uh it's just something to get used to it's not an excuse i mean that's how we're playing the game you got to learn to do it i i kind of like these two day turns to be honest with you i think this is how i'll always do it it's it's a lot better than one day turns which can really start to drag um I've got this transport, it's going around to Adelaide. Uh, we'll do more with Australia in upcoming episodes. The basic idea is uh, you've got, let's see, up here in Adelaide, you've got these four US dive bomber groups. Try to find your best bomber pilots that you can and get them into these groups. And then when you do, get them to Sydney, Rockhampton, Brisbane, and Townsville. I didn't do that in order. Sydney, Brisbane, Rockhampton, and Townsville. Get your dive bombers into there with one squadron of fighters. So <clears throat> as you see here, we've got 25 Warhawks, <coughs> excuse me, in Brisbane, we've got 25 Warhawks. I don't think I have any in Rockhampton yet. Uh, in Townsville, I've got 25 Warhawks. Did I move some up to Moresby? Is that why they're not in Rockhampton? No. Not sure where I put them. Oh, I, I've got them in, uh, in Cairns. Uh, so here, 20, uh, 16. And that's mainly because it looks like he's going to come up and maybe move around this way. So I've got them, you know, Sydney, Brisbane, Townsville, and Cairns. Uh, you also want some in Rockhampton. You also want dive bombers in each of those towns. Then the fighters can escort them out. And then what do we do with the fighter pilots? Now, you can see 
16, I already put 10 in this group reserve, but I don't really want them in the group reserve. Where do I want them? Let's put them in the reserve them itself and release those 10, okay? And so we've got 16 pilots now, or I'm sorry, 18 ready pilots. And another thing you wanna do is go look in the reserve and try to get as, now these just got up here, so I haven't done this yet, but what you'd wanna do is go to reserve, okay? Get a new pilot. Oh, wait a minute. Shoot. Gosh darn it. I messed that up. Request a veteran. Now it takes you. You can show the pull the reserve, track on, any. You know, you could just have this up in any, right? Sort by experience or sort by air. I usually, in this case, would do by air because if they have good air, they've got good experience usually. I mean, now some of these, like a 49, but take your, you know, 10 or 20 best fighter pilots, put five in here, put five here, you know, put five here and five here. This is where I've got the fighters now. That's what you want to do. Uh, and then get dive bombers over here. And so when his carriers come over here again, you can go out and try to try to bomb those suckers with escort. And if you've got good enough pilots in there, you can really maybe get some of his carrier trained pilots uh, knocked out. Uh, because you've got the Warhawks, which, you know, it's not as good as the Zero, but it's not terrible. And if you get experienced enough pilots in there, you can do some damage. Uh, you may also want to put fighters in Port Moresby, so we can't just ab absolutely devastate the airfield here, because that's what a Japanese player will try to do. Bomb that airfield so you can't get any air units up here. That becomes a real problem. As we look around, Dutch East Indies, not a whole lot to talk about. He hasn't made his play... You know, everything is at Batavia and Surabaya. He hasn't made his play for it yet, for it yet. So, you know, we just sit. We sit. And mainly, you know, you, you want to have one group of fighters at each play. Well, I'd love to have more than that, but a lot have gotten blown out. Batavia, we've got two squadrons of fighters. It's six total fighters. Uh, Surabaya, you know, we've got three here. Okay, running cap. Uh, because eventually he'll bomb this enough that you don't have runways left. When that happens, you move him out to Bandawang or to Jillajap or, you know, Dinpasser. You could move him out here. I also have these Australians that are still all the way back here. Let's get these to Darwin if we can. Can they make it all the way to Darwin? Oh, oh they are in 224th group RAF, so they can go anywhere. It looks like we may have to just take them down to Koapang, and that's what we'll do. All right, so transfer to Koapang. You may say, where, where, oh, I had already done some of them down here. Uh, what, what's Koapang? Well, it's the, it's kind of the last Dutch East Indies base before you get to Darwin. Take your fighters here and even buy this one out if you can. Now you can't buy that one out but get it into Darwin. I've already gotten a lot of fighters here. I've flown them down from Singapore out of 224, well, not out of, they're still in 224 Group RAF, but I've flown them down here to Darwin because you want to have that air coverage over Darwin. And so, you know, this is, this is all stuff that came out of Singapore, and I've skipped them all the way down here. Um, Borneo is lost, obviously, but we just sit here at Bally Poppin. We're going to try to hit him with the coastal guns. Uh, Oosthaven, Palembang, not, nothing to do there. Singapore, you know, eventually he's going to attack here. We've got uh, plenty of fuel. Now, one thing that you'll always have is plenty of fuel and generally supply. Because you've got so much fuel, it's turning it into supply here at Singapore. Same thing with Palembang. So we just sit. We sit and we wait. Uh, we've got a garrison of 619 here. They should all be on combat, defend for Singapore, and that's what we've got. We we wait. Uh, Rangoon, we'll talk more about Rangoon in upcoming episodes. China has gotten so interesting in this game. Probably the most interesting game in China I've ever played. Uh, he's doing a great job of trying to surround troops such as this. Now, we pulled out of uh, Kansen. We were trying to come over to Kukong. He got back here. So now we're trying to get up here to uh, Hangyang and we're going to try to make a big base here because he's got to attack us across a river into Hangyang no matter how it goes. At Changsha, he does not have to cross a river. 
Hang Yangi does from the south. We've got units, you know, that are just waiting. Now you can see you're always going to have a little bit of a supply problem in China. It's just the nature of it. You're flying supply from uh, Lido over to, I think it's uh, Kunming. You're just doing that over and over, but it's not enough. We still control the Burma Road, which means we get 500 tons of supply every turn. But again, it's just never going to be enough. You've got too many men, not enough supplies. Uh, I Chang is the main place. Now, see, this is where we may get trapped. And I'm trying to get out of here. But he's just got units everywhere. Charlie's everywhere. Uh, you know, we pulled out of Cheng Chao and Luoyang. Now, you may say, well, you're still sitting in Luoyang. No, nah, we're on the move. We're trying to get out of here. We currently hold Cyan. I'm trying to get up there because this is a massive force. 103. We've spotted 103,000 Japanese troops, 640 guns, 233 AFVs. He's going to try to take Cyan, and if he takes Cyan and Nanyang, wow, that's tough stuff right there. we got to try to get up and defend it. I don't think we can get there in time, which means we're going to have to then, you know, drop back to here, drop back to here, help in Lan Chow. I don't even know. Uh, I've never been in that situation before, but all of these guys are dropping back behind the river here. Because he's got massive armies here as well. He's all bunched up here and here, but it's working. Uh, because he, these are just big bullies just running around the map hitting stuff. So we got to try to get out of there. We're going to try to get to Cyan. If not, we'll jump over here. we got to get behind rivers where we can. Uh, Lan Chao is also very important. I have stuff coming down to Lan Chao. Uh, I've even tempted to take everything out of Yanan and go back to Lan Chao. He's just done a great job there. Uh, next time, we'll talk more about Calcutta, Colombo. You can see he's got a task force here. Two battleships. This is what we've spotted. Okay, we've spotted five of the ships, two battleships, a cruiser, and two destroyers. Um, but it says we've we've actually sighted eight ships. Uh, but these are the only ones that we've gotten specific sightings on. Okay. So he's got two battleships in this group. That's something we could actually have a scrap with if we wanted to. But I, I've got the Hermes up here, or Hermes, I guess. Uh, I think it's already in repair. Did I get it up here? And we just got the Royal Sovereign in, and we just got the Indomitable in. So now the British have a real aircraft carrier. If we look at the breakout, though, it's not... Uh, we did this last time, didn't we? Sometimes I forget what we've done. We kind of looked at the breakout. If not, we'll look at it more certainly as time goes on. If we look at uh, ships under repair... No, I guess the Hermes isn't up here yet. It's got to be getting close. Yeah, there it is. All right, so the Hermes did take a hit. 26 on the system, 31 on the float, and that flood damage is major. So we had to get it back into a port or a major port. I'm just putting it in Aiden at the shipyard there, and we'll get that repaired. And then the rest of this stuff, the Cornwall, Emerald, you know, all of these light cruisers, the destroyers, some of them Dutch, the vast, actually the majority of them Dutch, will put with... Uh, the Indomitable, and we'll also take the Royal Sovereign Battleship, probably take it to Karachi initially, but if he wants to get up here by Bombay, if we've got, you know, a carrier and a battleship, we'll come, we'll come battle with him here, uh, especially with all of those cruisers and light cruisers. I think we could give him a real scrap there. We'll see. Uh, over here, it's Colombo, Madras, Calcutta, and Bombay. Those, those are uh, what, where I send everything in India for the most part. I mean, you have garrison requirements, right? But that's where I send most things. All right, I'm going to call this an episode. So what I'm going to try to do in the next few that we go over things is, we, of course, we'll always look at the stats. But I'll try to be a little more in-depth you know, Pearl Harbor through New Zealand next time, but I'll always kind of look over the entire map. That gives you a bigger and better feel. We've also got what coming in from Cape Town. Uh, this is just a Dutch destroyer. Okay, that can also go with that uh, carrier group. Uh, what is this transport? The Duntroon. Okay, we've got that going to Bombay and then on to Aden as well. I have here. 
the Moreton Bay, heading back to Aden to pick up more stuff. Okay, we'll go over this next time. I've got this stuff just sitting, or I am going to have it just sitting out here, because I don't want to run into that battleship. So how do you do that? Right now, it's destined for Colombo, which is good. That's where we want it to go. But let's have it back off a little bit. Let's have it go here until this clears, and then we'll just put remain on station, right? So it just backs up, and it's going to sit here in this hex until we tell it to do something different or it runs out of gas. So anyway, uh, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I know I did. I was talking really quickly. <laughs> so anyway, have a great one. Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time.